The Minnesota-Wisconsin rivalry is the oldest rivalry in college football. The two teams first played back on November 15, 1890 in Minneapolis. The first time they met, Minnesota beat Wisconsin 63 to nothing. The 1890 game remains the largest victory of the entire series. The following year, the Badgers came back to Minneapolis and lost again, but this time only 26 to 12. The two teams have played every year since, with the exception at 1906 when college football itself was in crisis and some schools suspended the sport because of its violent nature. In 1930, a man named R.B. Fouch decided that the two teams needed a physical trophy, so he created what he called the Slab of Bacon Trophy, a symbol of the phrase, bringing home the bacon. The trophy was made of black walnut wood, which had a football carved in the center with an M or a W in the middle, depending upon how it was hung. The word bacon is printed on each side of the slab, and the scores for each season were printed on the back. The slab of bacon served as the rivalry trophy for the series until 1943 when it disappeared in Wisconsin's custody after a Minnesota victory. It was considered lost, quote-unquote, for over 50 years until it was discovered, quote-unquote, in a Camp Randall storage office in 1994. Lost even though the scores were filled in for the dates beyond 1943. The 1943 game was played on November 20th. Minnesota won 25-13. The game was played in Minnesota. Wisconsin had won it in 1942, so they had the Slab of Bacon Trophy in their possession. After Minnesota's victory in 1943, Wisconsin coach Harry Stuhldreher sent one of his coaches to the Gopher dressing room with the Slab of Bacon Trophy. The assistant coach returned, with the trophy still in his hands, reporting, Dr. Hauser says no. He believes such trophies should be out for the duration and won't take it. Dr. Hauser referred to George Hauser, Minnesota head coach from 1942 to 1945. An article in the Star Tribune from November 21, 1943, implies that refusing the trophy boosted morale for the Badgers. Not that that cast a paralyzing ray of sunshine in the Badger dressing quarters, but it did help. And there was a gang of kids, rated seemingly hopeless underdogs, who had fought to such heights that assistant coach Guy Sun unhesitatingly said, It was by far our best game of the season. That shows you what we might have done had we been able to keep one full squad together. We're all proud of the boys while giving Minnesota due credit. Harry Stuhldreher was off in a corner huddling with himself, away a bit from the mob of the training room. Yes, he nodded soberly, two weeks. That's all we've had a chance to practice as a unit. The game was played in November, yet Wisconsin's head coach said they've only been together for two weeks. Why? The United States was in the midst of World War II in 1943. The war had been going on for almost two years, and it involved every aspect of American life, including college football. Some schools had suspended their teams. Some schools played rosters full of four Fs, four Fs being men not fit for military service. But other schools had plenty of players to put on their rosters because they were involved in military training, particularly for the Navy and the Marines, so those schools weren't depleted of athletes at all. All of this led to an incredible imbalance of football. So why did Hauser refuse the trophy? There are indications Minnesota had refused the trophy because of what happened earlier in the season between Minnesota and Michigan. In 1943, Michigan had a huge amount of talent because players were there for military training. Michigan was part of the V-12 Navy College Training Program. Participants were required to stay in shape. To stay in shape, they could choose between being involved in Navy fitness classes or play football for the Wolverines. Minnesota, on the other hand, was depleted. Head coach and legend Bernie Bierman had joined the war effort in 1942 and wouldn't return until 1945. Bill Daly, who played for Minnesota from 1940 to 42, was now playing for Michigan. 
Daly had won two national championships at Minnesota in 1940 and 41, and he'd beaten Michigan all three years. Wisconsin player Elroy Hirsch, known as Crazy Legs Hirsch, had earned first-team All-American honors as a halfback in 1942. He was part of the Navy training program, so he played for Michigan in 1943, Minnesota lost the 43 game to Michigan, 49-6, with Hurst scoring three touchdowns, including a 61-yard run on the first play of the game. Daly scored two touchdowns in what was the most one-sided victory in the series at that time. Daly ended up playing in only six games that season because of Navy reassignment. He rushed for 817 yards, fourth in the nation in rushing yardage, and was named an All-American and finished seventh in Heisman Trophy voting. Now, Minnesota hadn't lost to Michigan since 1932. The teams had tied in 1933, but Minnesota had won the Little Brown Jug in 1934, and they'd kept it ever since. Over that period, the Gophers had won five national titles, 1934, 35, 36, and 1940 and 1941. Minnesota was a juggernaut throughout the 1930s. Michigan's coach in 1943 was a man named Fritz Krisler. When Michigan beat Minnesota 49-6, many people were upset that Krisler accepted the Little Brown Jug, the rivalry trophy between Minnesota and Michigan. The game was in Ann Arbor, but Minnesota hadn't brought the little brown jug with them. It had to be shipped later. There was a fair amount of controversy, and Fritz Krisler was raked over the coals for having accepted the trophy under unfair circumstances due to the imbalance that had been created by World War II. The criticism apparently didn't bother Krisler too much, as the Wolverines were proud to display the little brown jug at their end-of-year athletic banquet. Minnesota and Michigan had played earlier in the season on October 23, 1943, so there's no doubt that the handling of the Little Brown Jug Trophy was on Hauser's mind when he played Wisconsin. And after 1943, the Slab of Bacon Trophy just disappeared. Minnesota won in 1944, 28-26, but I could find no mention of the Slab of Bacon Trophy. In 1948, the Slab of Bacon Trophy was permanently replaced by Paul Bunyan's Axe, the trophy Minnesota and Wisconsin play for today. Now you have to admit, it's a lot cooler than the Slab of Bacon Trophy. It's always fun watching the winning team run around a field wielding a giant axe and then pretending to chop a goalpost down. This video was originally intended to be a three-minute short, but after looking into the story further, I decided that the disappearance of the Slab of Bacon Trophy needed more context of the history behind it. Because too many times we forget that while sports does provide an escape for all of us from regular life, there is no escaping what's going on in the world around us all of the time. This was certainly a case in which major events in the world played a part in what happened on the football field. The disappearance of the Slab of Bacon Trophy is a story that deserves to be remembered, and that's what we're here for. I'm John Johnston, and this is Hardcore College Football History. Thank you.